Hello everyone! In today's video, we are going to do some very simple plant drawings with markers. In the first section, I will talk about how to shade the basic form. Then we will practice drawing different plants one by one. Some of them are very simple and only will take us a few minutes to draw. Some of them can be a little bit challenging. In the last section, I will show you how to draw this small scene. You will find the detailed supply list and the timestamp in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. In my previous videos, we have practiced drawing different basic forms such as sphere, cube, and pyramid. We can simplify the form of a plant part into a cylinder. Draw an ellipse first, then draw two vertical straight lines. Lastly, draw a curved line to close this shape. As usual, we will need three shades of gray markers to create a range of value to make this cylinder look three-dimensional. When the light source is from the upper left, you will mainly add darker values on the right side of the cylinder. My marker strokes will simply follow the direction of the plan. I don't always draw the vertical stroke to color the cylinder. It really depends on what texture I'm trying to create. The upper part of the cylinder will appear a little bit darker here because the reflective light bouncing back from the ground will make the lower part appear brighter. From here, I'm adding more darker values on the core shadow part to enhance the contrast. Notice the core shadow is not all the way to the edge of the cylinder. The bouncing light makes the right edge of the cylinder lighter than the core shadow. After the marker ink dries, it becomes a little bit lighter. So I will repeat previous steps until it has enough contrast. Lastly, draw some highlights. For the first practice, we're going to draw a simple and generic plant that doesn't need us to draw leaves one by one. The steps are very similar to my previous video of how to draw shrubs. To simplify its form, we can think it as a sphere set on top of a cylinder. Draw a circle first to outline the shape of the plants. Then draw squiggly lines to create an organic shape. Draw some marks to simulate the shape of the leaves. You can use line weight to create darkness as well. When the light source is from the upper left, draw more marks on the right side. To color the plants, it will be good to have at least three shades of green colors. I like starting by using a light yellow color first on the area that is closer to the light source, so it looks like a direct sunlight hitting on the plants. Then start with the light green. We will create shading gradually to make this plants look three-dimensional. I get used to using chisel tips more often than the brush tip. I like how the chisel tip can create some marks that looks different from the brush tip. Make sure your marker strokes are consistent. The plant blocks some sunlight, so it will create a cast shadow on the plant's part. Make sure you darken these areas.
When you switch to a darker green, try to slow down your pace. Only add a few strokes on the core shadow area and a couple dark spots on the plants. I like moving my pen fairly fast to create a sharper line. You can do some hatching in the shadow area to add the layers to the drawing. Also, when you don't have enough shades of markers, Using hatching is a good way to further build darker values to your drawing. I want the viewer's attention on the plants, so I won't add too many details on the plant's pots. Lastly, use a gel pen to add the highlight. My gel pen was low on the ink, so it doesn't look very bright here. Follow the same steps, we are gonna do another practice. This time, we will draw different types of marks, strokes, and colors. By drawing different types of marks, we can create a completely different look. When I'm drawing these curved marks, I make sure I draw different sizes and create different density, so they look more interesting. The technique is very simple. By simplifying the form of the plants, we can quickly draw it without much effort. This time, I'm using curved strokes and some small dots to darken the core shadow areas. I left the flower white to keep it simple. For this drawing, we will draw leaves one by one. But don't worry, once we break it down step by step, it will be very simple and relaxing to draw. First, we need to pay attention to the leaf's orientation. The new leaves on the top will point up. So sometimes you will see the back of the leaves. The leaves on the bottom will be a little bit flappy. Since it's at a lower position, we will see its front surface. 
Second, in my previous videos, I talked about how the length and the width of the leaf will appear differently from different angles. Here is what the front side of the leaf looks like. When it is growing towards you, it will appear shorter. When you see it from the side, it will appear narrower. The key to make your plants look more natural is to draw different leaves with different angles. When you see the fiddle leaf fig from the side, you will see the edge is wavy. So there is no exact way to draw it. Try to relax your hand and let your pencil flow. You will create smoother lines. When I use a pen to draw the outline, my speed is fairly fast. Here you can see my normal speed. I like the loose line style. When you move your pen faster, your line will be crisp and have variations on line weight. However, it is hard to control your pen when your speed is fast, so it does take some practice. I'm still not quite good at it either. Then why don't I draw it slowly? So when you draw the line with a slow and steady speed, the line weight will be very consistent. It is a different style. So try different styles you like, there is no wrong or right way to do it. I'm not trying to draw details on every single leaf, especially we will add color to it later. To color this plant, we can still use the chisel tip. My light source is from the upper left. I like using the yellow marker first to briefly color the potential highlight area. It also adds a warm undertone to the drawing. When you are using the green markers, don't cover all the yellow colors, especially on the edge of the leaf. Leave some yellow color area as a highlight. For this plant part, I really don't like how it turns out. One of the mistakes I made was that I didn't create a good shape for this plant part. So I don't recommend you follow my steps here. Check my other drawings in this video as your reference. From here, my marker strokes are simply following the direction of the leaves' veins. I draw from the center of the leaves towards the edge and lift my marker at the end, so the center will be a little bit darker than the edge. Later, all these strokes will look like leaves' veins. Now switch to the darker green to keep adding darker values. Remember, the light source is from the upper left, so I will add more darker colors on the lower right side of leaves. You don't have to use the chisel tip here. Brush tip will work great as well. I tried to use brush tip compared with chisel tip to draw this plant. Personally, I prefer chisel tip here. Later in my other drawings, you will see I use brush tips. 
I just want to encourage you to use what you have to draw things you like. I don't want your creativity is limited by what tools you have. This will be the darkest green in this drawing. I'm only adding a few strokes to darken the shadow areas. Grab a white paint marker or a gel pen to highlight the vein and draw some dots to show the highlight of the leaf. You can also use it to cover some inks that exceed the outline to tide your drawing. From here, I'm keeping adding some contrast to build up the depths, using the pen to refine some details. I only used some low saturated green colors throughout the whole drawing, so at the moment the plant looks a little bit dull. To make the colors look more interesting, the last step is that I added some light purple and bright green on this plant.
This drawing is one of my favorite. It is very easy and simple, but turns out quite beautiful. You can sketch any shapes of plant part you like, then sketch some circles to locate where you want to draw leaves. Try not to evenly spread these circles, make them look more random. Like I mentioned in the last drawing, my hand is moving fairly fast when drawing these lines. The more relaxing you are, the better results you will get. I'm always nervous when film myself drawing because I worry about making mistakes. But making mistakes is good. Your drawing doesn't need to be perfect. Each line and each mark is an expression of yourself at the moment. Just embrace it and enjoy the process. You will see before I draw a line. I often practice the hand movement before actually landing my pen on the paper. The coloring is very easy as well. The steps are the same with the last drawing. Remember, when you use green colors, don't cover all yellow colors. Leave some of the yellow color as part of the highlight. My light source is from the upper left. I will mainly add darker colors on the center to the left of each leaf. You will see I often rotate my markers to draw. By using different parts of the chisel tip, you will be able to draw different sizes and shapes of strokes.
for this plant part, learning from the mistakes I made from the last drawing. This time I decided to keep it simple. I only use one light gray to color the core shadow area. Hopefully it will make the plant part look like a white ceramic material. Use a white paint marker to draw some veins for each leaf. Draw some white dots to highlight the leaf. This drawing is probably the easiest out of all drawings in this video. If you want to see a more detailed Bird of Paradise plants drawing, feel free to check the final chapter of this video. When you are drawing these leaves, make sure they are not symmetrical shapes. Each leaf should look different. This time, instead of the yellow color, I decided to use a light blue to set the undertone. Same with the last drawing, I only colored the core shadow of the plant part. If your ink exceeds the outline too much, don't worry, you can use a white paint marker to fix it later. Thank you. 
You don't have to draw details on every single leaf. Try to focus on the whole picture. Make sure the whole drawing has light to dark values and enough contrast. For this exercise, we will draw a succulent. To make it easier, I decided to draw a side view. So basically, we will draw some pointy leaves from the bottom to the top. Very simple process. I don't trace my pencil outline precisely. Try to relax your hand so you can let your line flow smoothly. You can turn your sketchbook to an angle that makes you draw straight lines more easily. While coloring the plant part, I left the highlight area blank. We can draw some lines here to add a nice pattern to this plant pot. I don't have a blue-green marker, but I don't like heavily blending the marker colors together. So I use a blue color first, then layer the green color on the top. I'm adding darker value on the lower part of each leaf. My light source is from the upper left, so I will add more darker value on the right side of the plant. Use a very dark green to add some dark spots on the bottom of some leaves. It will immediately add depth to your drawing. Use a darker sand color to add more details on the pattern, but I only draw a little on the right side. I try to leave the left side of the plant pot as light as possible. Instead of using a warm gray, I decided to use a brown color here to darken the edge of the plant pot to add some thickness. Learning from the mistake I made before, I don't want to add too much darker colors on this plant pot this time. The highlight always makes the drawing look so different. From here, you can use a pen to define some outlines and tidy up your drawing. 
this is pretty much the final look. This is a drawing I did a long time ago, but I never posted the process. Since this video is all about plants, I think it's nice to include it here. Drawing a bouquet can be a little bit time consuming. To make the process easier, I didn't use a pen to outline first. And throughout the drawing, I will mainly use a brush tip. My flowers will be purple and pink. I'm using light color first to block in some flower shapes. Once the first layer dries, use the same color to gradually add dark values. For the rose petal, draw some C-shaped marks, just going around in a circle to draw it. Now going around each flower, I'm using a light green to draw leaves. To draw leaves, you will use a tip of brush to go down with a heavy pressure, then drag and lift it at the end to create a nice leaf shape. When I am adding the darker values to each leaf, I'm also refining the shape of the flower.
Before I show you the last drawing I did, I want to share my first try that didn't end up well. I did this drawing and made lots of mistakes. Not a great composition, colors are very messy. But I still try to finish this drawing and test out different colors. I don't always know what colors to use in my drawing. The best way is to go ahead, draw it, and try different markers I have. Don't get frustrated if the drawing doesn't turn out the way you want. Take a break and come back to improve it. The more practices I do, the better results I will get. After we practice the drawing different plants one by one, I think it will be helpful to show you what small scenery you can draw with these plants. To add a narrative to this drawing, I decided to draw cats in it. Spending more time in the sketching process is very important because you want to have a nice outline as a good foundation for your drawing. To create a nice composition, each plant should have different heights and size. I wanted to keep the drawing as simple as possible. In one of my previous videos, I did a garden scenery drawing that I had to draw small leaves one by one. But here I just want to draw plants that do not have so many leaves. To create a sense of depth, you can overlap your elements. So here I'm overlapping some plants to create the depths. Notice the bottom of the plant parts are not on the same level. If I put them all on the same level, the drawing may look flat. I place the big plants and the cat in the center of this drawing, so they will be naturally become the focal point. I will draw more details on the big plants and the cat, since it's the first thing people will look at. The coloring technique is fairly easy. It will be the same step we practiced before.
As I mentioned before, this plant is the focal point. We need to add more details to it. So I'm trying to be precise with my marker strokes. My marker follows the shape of the leaf. The shape of the marker strokes will naturally become part of the leaf veins. It could be a little bit challenging here to control your speed and strength. So I had to turn my sketchbook to an angle that allows me to draw these strokes more easily. One of the key is to adding darker values gradually. By doing that, you will be able to add layers to your drawing. I don't want this drawing look busy with so many different colors together, so I decided to color most of the plant's parts gray. If all plants in this drawing were just green colors, it could be a little bit boring. So instead of using green colors, I use a blue and purple to add darker values for this plants.
Here I'm adding a little cast shadow to each object to make them look like sitting on the ground. Lastly, adding some highlights and use pen to refine some of the details. 
this is pretty much the final look of this drawing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and drawing with me. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I will see you in my next video.